Okay, in this video I want to do an everything you ever wanted to know about energy and biological reactions type of video. Um, I'm just going to go over really in general, but with enough depth to understand what's going on, the energy and biological systems and how it works and um, what you kind of need to know. Alright, so to start out I got a little bit of information on free energy. So. The molecules of living cells possess energy because of their vibrations, rotations, and movements through space, and because of energy stored in bonds between atoms. So, um, if we know anything about molecules, we know that they're, you know, in motion. They're vibrating if they're solids, there's molecular vibrations if they're in the solid state. If they're in the liquid state, they're moving back and forth and colliding into each other, and they're moving even more rapidly if they're in a gaseous state. So, you know, we know they're moving around, we know that there's some energy associated with that movement. And there's also energy in bonds, because we know when we hydrolyze, say, ATP, that we release free energy. And that free energy is used to drive a lot of these reactions forward, even on favorable ones. So, there's energy in these processes. So the free energy, G, so this is, we're talking about, you know, in this case, free energy delta G not delta G sub naught or any of that kind of stuff. It's just delta G and um, that's in kcals per mole, kilojoules per mole, and I just put the equivalents over here for your for your own reference. Um, and it's a measure, it measures the energy of molecules that could in principle be used to do work. So it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be used to do work, but it's a, it's a measure of the molecules that, you know, energy that could be used to do work. So we want to do some kind of work, some kind of work in the biological system. So that's what the free energy is. So reactions cause disorder, right? We know that. Reactions cause disorder. We know that that's what entropy is. Entropy is a measure of disorder and a measure of how much disorder. And we know that we want to increase entropy in a lot of, in, a, in all cases. Um, so what I said here was reactions can cause disorder in two ways. So they could have changes in bond energy of the reacting molecules, which can cause heat release, um, which also which causes disorder in the environment, or the reaction can decrease the amount of order in the reacting molecules by breaking apart long chain molecules or by disrupting the in interaction that prevents bond rotation. Okay, um, in the first case over here, um, change, changes in bond energy of the reactive molecules can cause heat release. So, you know, we know that one of the byproducts of energy in, in all cases pretty much is heat, and heat is energy. So this release of heat is a release of energy into the environment. So you're, decre you're increasing the disorder of the environment, increasing the disorder of the universe is a good way to put it. Um, the reactions can also decrease the amount of order in the reactive molecules. Well, that's true. Remember, anytime you're forming more products than you had reactants, that's a good indication that you're increasing entropy, okay? And that that reaction is likely, you know, somewhat favorable. So that's something to look for. So the next one is reaction rates. So I want to talk about reaction rates. And I said a spontaneous reaction is not necessarily an instantaneous one. So this is an important distinction to make, that just because a reaction is um, spontaneous does not necessarily mean that it occurs right away. You know, in general, um, a reaction with a negative free energy change here, so a negative free energy change, the so negative delta G, will not necessarily occur rapidly by itself. This often requires, you know, the use of enzymes. So I can give a little example here just of a favorable reaction, which is a very negative delta G, but, but would, would take a very long time to occur by itself if there weren't these enzymes to do so. So you might recognize this reaction, C6H12, right? C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Okay, and that goes over to 6CO2 plus 6H2O, okay? So this com this combustion of glucose here, okay, this combustion of glucose right here is what this reaction is, has a very negative delta G, and that delta G, so this delta G is equal to negative 686 kcals per mole. So K cals per mole, okay? So it's negative 686 kcals per mole. So that's quite a negative delta G, and we know that that's favorable. 
or spontaneous. But even a very favorable reaction may not occur for centuries unless there are enzymes. So these enzymes that we talked about in previous videos are very, very important to um, getting reactions to occur rapidly. So unless there are, uh, there are enzymes to speed up the process, um, enzymes catalyze reactions and speed up their rate but do not change delta G. So you have to remember that that's very important that enzymes speed up the rate of the reaction but they don't change the delta G value. Okay, They don't change the free energy. So in case you're wondering what this delta G is and you don't know, the symbol delta means change in. It's a, it's a Greek letter, you know, people use it all the time in science. It means change in. Okay. And it means and what we have here then is a change in free energy. So what I want to do is I want to just draw briefly a reaction. This is just a very generic reaction, right? A plus B goes over to C plus D, right? So this is nothing nothing spectacular, just A plus B goes over to C plus D, right? And delta G, the actual delta G here for this is the free energy is going to be C plus D minus the free energy of A plus B. Okay, that's what delta G is going to wind up being. And why is delta, you might be wondering why delta G is useful because delta G is a measure of the amount of disorder caused by a reaction. So the delta G measure is a measure of the amount of disorder caused by a reaction. The change in order inside the cell plus the change in order of the surroundings caused by the by heat release. So that's that's what it is. And uh, delta G is useful is a useful measure of um, how far away from equilibrium a reaction is, right? How far away this is from equilibrium. So if we're looking at a reaction like say ATP, right? Goes over to ADP plus PI, okay? So we have that. So this has a large negative delta G, okay? Because, and, and you might be wondering why this has a large negative delta G. Well, this reaction has a large negative delta G, okay? Because the cell keeps it a long way from equilibrium by constantly replenishing fresh e a by constantly continually making fresh ATP. So it's continually producing ATP, and that's what keeps this reaction a long way from equilibrium. Um, if the cell were to die, then most of the ATP would be hydrolyzed until equilibrium was reached. So all the ATP would basically be hydrolyzed until the the delta G over here, which that should actually say I should say delta G is equal to zero. So until the delta G is equal to zero. Okay? So spontaneous reactions is the next part here. From the second law of thermodynamics, we know that the disorder in the universe can only increase. So we can only increase disorder in the universe. Thus, delta G is negative if the disorder in the universe increases. So we want to increase the disorder in the universe, and that gives us a negative delta G. And that means the reaction is spontaneous. So this means a chemical reaction that is spontaneous must have a negative delta G. So in order for the reaction to be spontaneous, it has to have a negative delta G, uh, a pretty simple principle. And I don't know if there's anything else I want to, per se, say about that. Yeah, I, I can basically, what I'll show you guys just here is like, say, we have G of the products, so delta G of the products, okay? So that would be minus the G of the reactants. So minus the delta G of the reactants, which should be equal to a delta G that is less than zero. Okay, it has to be less than zero. So the products minus the reactants has to be have a delta G less than zero. If the reaction, so here's an example here. If a reaction has a delta G of negative five kcals per mole, right? then the reverse reaction has a delta G of plus 5 kcals per mole. So it's the exact opposite. So if we have, you know, a delta G that's negative in one direction, then if we want to reverse that direction, and this is something you're commonly going to do in biochemistry, um, it would be the exact opposite. So, five, so plus 5 kcals per mole. And it will not occur spontaneously. That's the other thing you need to see here is that because this delta G is positive, 
It's not going to occur spontaneously without being coupled to a reaction that releases free energy. So that would be like ATP hydrolysis. If you coupled this thing to ATP hydrolysis, you'd have more than enough negative free energy. Okay, and then the, the change in free energy would be large and negative. So predicting reactions. So how do we predict which way a reaction is going to go based on this information? So to predict the direction of a reaction, we must measure its standard free energy change. Okay, and notice that the standard free energy change is not the same as delta G. It's actually delta G with a little, you know, zero or degree symbol at the top there. Um, this quantity represents a gain or loss of free energy as one mole of reactants is converted to one mole of product. So this is a, represents a gain or loss in free energy as one mole of reactants is converted to one mole of products under standard conditions. And standard conditions are, this should say, one mole and pH equal to seven. So the standard conditions are one mole and pH equal to seven, okay? So just to give you an idea of what some of these delta Gs might be, these um, delta G sub naught are free energy change okay so glucose right so glucose one phosphate I'm just gonna say glucose one P over to glucose six phosphate and that has a delta G prime equal to negative 1.7 kcals over moles, okay? So that is a delta G of negative 1.7. And some other ones like sucrose over to glucose plus, flu ah, if I could speak, sucrose to glucose plus uh, fructose is negative 5.5 kcals, ATP to ADP and PI um, is negative 7.3, and uh, the combustion reaction of glucose we already talked about is negative 686 kcals per mole. Okay, so the next thing I want to go to here is chemical equilibrium. So a fixed relationship exists between the standard free energy change of a reaction, delta G prime, and its equilibrium constant K, okay? And basically, if we have a reaction where Y is going over to X, okay, the reaction will pr proceed until the ratio of the concentrations of product over reactant is equal to K. Okay, so this reaction will occur and keep going until the products over the reactants is equal to the equilibrium constant here. So at this point, the free energy of the system will have its lowest value, so it's the lowest possible point. And the way you can kind of model this is like, so this is say free energy. So this is free energy over here of the system. And you can think of this kind of like a parabola, like parabola that's opening upward. You know, you might have seen this in, um, you might have seen this in algebra or something like this. And this right here, this point right here, say, I mean, that might not be totally accurate, but, and that corresponds usually to what's known as, like, I believe, the vertex in algebra of the parabola here. And we know that this parabola has, you know, symmetry. And basically what this point is right here is equal to x concentration of x over the concentration of y. And notice it's the lowest point, or, you know, based on my drawing, the, the lowest free energy point, okay? So that's the equilibrium point right there. And I'll just say maybe EQ point, right? EQ point. That's the equilibrium point right there. Now the reaction will proceed until the ratio of the concentrations of x over y is equal to k, right? And to, to calculate these quantities, if you wanted to calculate them with actual numbers, which you probably will have to do, and I'll do problems with that later, is that delta G must is equal to negative RT, R is the gas constant, T is the temperature in degrees Kelvin, and it's the ln of the um, equilibrium constant, okay? And then you can actually do a little bit of algebra and get a problem here where k is equal to 10, that should be the inverse log of negative delta g um, naught over rt, okay, and that's all at 37 degrees Celsius. So those are some important equations that you might want to remember. And um, 
coupled reactions here, okay? Reactions can be coupled if they share one or more intermediates. So this is important. Coupling of reactions is extremely important in, um, in biochemistry. But I'll have to come back and finish this in another video, okay?